Hey guys, my name is Haley and today we're going to be filming a kind of random recommendations type of video. It is technically recommendations because I will be recommending books based on these types of coffee. I will say that I kind of just did this based on the caffeine level in different types of coffee. <laughs> so I guess you could go with like the easiest type of book to read to like the hardest is what I'm kind of going for. It all makes sense in my brain <laughs> of the order that I put them in. You don't have to like coffee to watch this video. It really has nothing to do with coffee, but I love coffee if you didn't know that about me and drink it literally every day and have favorites. <laughs> so that's what today's video is going to be. I hope you get some recommendations from it and let's get right on into it. So the first thing that I came up with, there was no like list for different types of coffee. I just kind of picked from the types of coffee I know exist. I think I have like seven. <laughs> so there's that. I did not make this tag. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a tag. <laughs> but the first one that I have is frappe. If you don't know, frappes are basically ice cream <laughs> and have very little caffeine, if at all. Like think of a vanilla bean drink from Starbucks. That's that's what I'm talking about. There's no caffeine in that. That's for people who don't like coffee. And for that, I'm going with Lois Lane Fallout. This is a trilogy that I read so many years ago and to this day is still one of my favorite trilogies. <laughs> and that's because I'm recommending it for that, for the fact that there is nothing difficult in these stories. It's mostly cute fluff, but it's really fun cute fluff. <laughs> so that's the vibe for a lot of these that I'm gonna go with. And this is a story in which by the title you would assume is about Superman. <laughs> it is about a story where Lois Lane is working, she's in high school, she's working at a newspaper company and she starts chatting with this boy online in a chat room called Smallville Guy. So if you know anything about Superman, I'll be straight up with you, Superman is not by my, my favorite like superhero by any means. I actually really don't like him. <laughs> but I know that there is a TV show called Smallville and it's about Superman and I've always wanted to watch it and I just never have <laughs> and so the fact that his like screen name is Smallville Guy gives it away to anybody who is familiar with superheroes that this is Superman if the title of Lois Lane didn't do that for you <laughs> and it's just them basically not saying anything about themselves like personal but they are making this relationship online they clearly both have huge crushes on each other they're both keeping secrets but they're fine with it and my favorite aspect of this other than the like chat room romance idea is that there is this video game that is virtual reality that you can go into and it becomes a bigger thing in the later books in the series and this video game is one that you can literally put on a virtual reality and create your own character and meet each other in it so they meet through the video game but don't actually know what the other looks like in person and something about that type of romance of like online romance is really really cute to me that could also be very creepy like please make a horror book about that but <laughs> their relationship is adorable to this day probably one of my favorite relationships that I've shipped so hard in all my years of reading. So if you want cute fluff, this is a good one. Next up we have Frappuccino. That has a little bit more caffeine in it. And to me, Frappuccinos just kind of taste like flavored, like vaguely coffee flavored ice. But y'all do you. <laughs> and that is, for that one, I'm gonna go with House in the Cerulean Sea. Mainly because Frappuccinos do have some caffeine in them more so than a Frappe. And I feel like that is a good in between. Uh, it's mainly still fluff and kind of like you're drinking a dessert, but you get a tiny bit of caffeine in there. <laughs> so if you're on booktube, you probably know what this is. And it's this absolutely adorable found family story of this man who is in charge of these going and making sure that these orphanages are keeping track of their children. And he goes and meets a, this ragtag cast of kids one of which is the antichrist another one just wants to be a bellhop <laughs> one of them turns into a pomeranian even though he's a werewolf and just a really cute cast of kids like that and this is honestly one of my favorite books i've ever read just because it is the most wholesome book i have ever read and the way i always describe this book is if you like team star kid who are the people who wrote a Harry potter musical and a ton of other musicals who are people i have adored for my entire life like since i was 14 years old <laughs> if you like their sense of humor i have never seen their sense of humor captured in a book so well as in this and i don't know why that's the comparison my brain made but it makes so much sense if you know star kid's humor 
as well as I do. And I was literally listening to this audiobook. I started it late at nine, night for no reason and literally could not stop thinking about it for the next 24 hours while I was trying to find time to finish it because it was so good. And I have never laughed out loud so hard to an audiobook or just like squealed at the cuteness in so long. It is adorable. It will melt your heart. The reason I put this above just like pure fluff like Lois Lane is because there is a lot of like important stories in here of like how to treat kids. These are kids that were bullied and like tossed away and also the headmaster of this orphanage is literally Dumbledore <laughs> and he has a romance with our main character and it's the cutest thing in the entire world but also has some substance to it of like basically how to treat other people. And I love it so much. And this is what started my obsession with TJ Klune's books. <laughs> so if you're gonna go to Starbucks and drink your little Frappuccino and want a nice, easy read that will probably make you just cry in public, but in the best way possible, I recommend this one. <laughs> Next up we have latte. So latte is your like average go-to drink for a lot of coffee drinkers. That just means that it has milk in it so it's not straight black coffee or an espresso. There normally is an espresso shot in a lot of, of these types of drinks. <laughs> Lattes you can also add a bunch of espresso shots to but it's mainly just your average coffee that most people will get or even the coffee that you make at your house if you just make a pot of coffee and put creamer in it that's literally a latte. So. For this I was going for something that pretty much everyone could read that's not necessarily fluffy but not actually difficult to read by any means and a book that I would recommend to literally anyone. And for that I'm going to go with Red, White, and Royal Blue. <laughs> Mainly because I do not know a single person who doesn't love this book that has read it. And I also think I was the last person on the planet to read it because I just read it this year. <laughs> And that is because while this book is very cute and fluffy and has a really really cute male male romance, the substance of the book gives it a lot more weight than just your cute fluffy romance contemporary type of thing like the previous two books. And that is because this is about the son of an American of the American president and the grandson of the Queen of England and they are they start off as like frenemies <laughs> and then they turn into actually get to know each other and they start falling for the other but they literally know they can't date because of the politics behind their families and the way the politics were handled in this were so realistic and I think anybody would relate to this is a very accurate depiction of what would happen if this were to happen in real life in my opinion minus the fact that they actually got rid of a lot of the homophobia that I think would actually happen that was the one thing that I didn't think was realistic but also it made this book a lot easier to consume seeing that. So it's sort of an idealistic <laughs> idea of what would happen with some real life consequences if this situation were to take place. And I also know that literally, again, nobody who has ever read this has not liked it or hated it to my knowledge. And a lot of people have read this book and everybody was looking forward to Casey McQuiston's other books because of this. It was such a good debut novel. <laughs> So this is definitely one I would recommend to anyone who wants a cute contemporary. By all means, please read this. <laughs> Especially if you're gonna like go make your own coffee in the morning or go through a drive through and get your average like latte. Read this alongside it. Next up I have mocha, which is an underrated coffee in my opinion. <laughs> I always forget how much I like mochas until I get one and I'm like, this is so good. Why don't I drink these more? And it's probably because I don't really make them by myself at my house and I have to go to a coffee shop for it. But for that one, I was basically going for like a somewhat heavy story because there's a lot of coffee in a mocha, but that has a really, really sweet aspect to it. Because if you didn't know, mochas are made with chocolate and chocolate is obviously sweet. And that's why a lot of people like them because it's basically putting a lot of sweetness in your coffee other than just creamer. And for that, I'm gonna go with Honey Girl. My explanation behind this one is this is a very serious story about this girl who has a lot of family, issues. She's basically gone through her whole life being the perfect daughter, the perfect person, got all of her degrees and like has been doing well in school her whole life. And then she graduates and doesn't know what to do with herself and just kind of panics and has a mental breakdown. Goes to Vegas and accidentally marries a girl in Vegas and then goes back to her real life. And she has to decide what she wants to do about this marriage. She has to decide what she wants to do with her life and her degree that she now has and doesn't know what to do with. So it is a very, very serious story. And her story with her family especially was very, very hard to read for me. But 
the reason I thought this would be a good one for the sweetness that's added to it with a mocha is there's this really, really cute romance between her and the girl that she married in Vegas, who she obviously did not know previously. And she decides to go off to New York and actually get to know this girl. And their romance is adorable. <laughs> it is the cutest female female romance I've read probably ever. And I, it just has my favorite aspect that I've been learning. I feel like I've said this every time I've talked about this book. <laughs> it has this aspect to it that I'm realizing I really love is when a book involves a radio show and there the way that the girl that she married talks over the radio show about her is the sweetest thing in my opinion. They're so cute. They're very gentle with each other. I mean obviously they do argue they're human beings but their romance is this tender cute little thing that I feel like fits the mocha I was gonna say aesthetic. I don't know if that's the right word. <laughs> the mocha feeling the best of any book I could ever think of. So if you like serious topics with a dash of super sweet romance in it, I highly recommend this one. Next up I decided to go with just straight up black coffee. I am someone who can normally drink black coffee like just straight black coffee. I do like to put like a Splenda in it just for a little bit of sweetness but I can easily drink coffee without any form of creamer mainly because I'm like mostly lactose intolerant and I use powder creamer anyway. But for this one I basically just went with like a hard read but an important one and for that I'm gonna go with birthday. I accidentally binged this the other day so spoiler for my wrap up of the month but this is a story about two boys who were born in the hospital on the same day and have been friends their entire life because their families became friends after being stuck in this hospital for several days because of a freak snowstorm. And it is told every year on their birthday. So each chapter or each like section of the book is their birthday. And it's told from the ages of 13 to 18. And you just get a snapshot of their lives each year of dramatic things that happen on their birthday. And it is heartbreaking. Also, this book has probably made me cry harder than any book this year. <laughs> like, possibly. I have cried at a lot of books this year, so I'm not sure how accurate that is. But it's a hard read. Deals with a lot of homophobia. Deals with a lot of transphobia. And it's just a really interesting commentary on how gender and the binary of gender and, like, what's a girl thing, what's a boy thing is so taught because of our misogynistic society. And I loved it. And I sobbed like an absolute baby. <laughs> it's so sad and so heartbreaking, but it's such an important story. And I felt like black coffee went with that really well because I need the coffee. It's very important for me to survive during the day, but also it's kind of hard to drink. And this was kind of hard to consume. That's my logic. Next up we have Americana, which I felt like I just had to throw in here because I know it's such a popular drink, specifically in Korea, that all the K-pop idols drink because it's literally an espresso that's just watered down so you don't have to drink a straight espresso. <laughs> but it also doesn't have a lot of calories in it like any other coffee that would, that you could drink. So like a mocha or a latte, which is important for K-pop idols. And for that one, I'm gonna go with The Bone Season, mainly because this is a kind of hard to read book I have heard I didn't think it was <laughs> but it's a complicated world to sort of learn because it is high fantasy but people were making this out to be so difficult to learn but to me it's more of just like a paranormal that reads like a high fantasy and I love it this is probably my favorite series of all time but I have heard a lot of people say it's very very hard to read and very hard to get into which is basically I feel like fits with an Americano really well because it's literally espresso so if you don't like coffee you probably won't drink it <laughs> But it is watered down a little bit in that it is still accessible and a lot of people could read it if you can learn the world, but it is a very difficult read. It is a time-consuming, brain-consuming read. It is so worth it in my opinion and will definitely wake you up and get you wrapped up in this entire world. <laughs> I wish there were more people that read the series. I know there's a decent amount of people that read it, but all the people that I've seen on booktube that have read this or tried to read it, it didn't go well and I don't know why because it's probably my favorite series ever. <laughs> I love the romance in this between Paige and the Warden. I love it so much and I really need to read the new book that came out this year. And then last we have espresso. There are very few people on this planet that drink just an espresso shot. Most people put them in other forms of coffee but I have on occasion actually just asked for an espresso shot at a coffee shop. I actually did that once at a random like indie baby little new coffee shop and I went up and I was like hey 
I am about to do a theater show. I do not have time to drink a whole coffee. Can you just get me an espresso shot? And they were like, an espresso shot in your latte? And I'm like, no, I want an espresso shot. Like, just hand me the little cup of straight espresso. And the man in the entire coffee shop just kind of stared at me. And everybody, over, like all the workers came over and watched me just down this espresso shot. And then I went and did my show perfectly fine because I had enough energy. <laughs> <laughs> that is an incident that has stuck in my mind forever. <laughs> but for espresso, I'm going to go with House of Leaves. This is one of those books that people either love or hate or literally could not get through because there are so many footnotes and like so many times you have to flip back and forth and there's like so much multimedia. It's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> And this is probably my favorite horror book of all time. So I think it's worth it in the sense that the espresso shot did what I wanted it to do and that it wakes me up immediately so I can go do the things. But I also feel like this book did everything I've always wanted horror books to do. Because if you didn't know, I am not easily scared in any form of media. Like I'm not scared of scary movies. There are very few things on this planet that I'm actually scared of. And there are only like two or three books in my life that have ever actively scared me and the fact that I couldn't read them at nighttime and this is one of them. <laughs> it just like burrows into your brain because you're reading about this man who is reading about a case and he becomes really obsessive about it and you almost become obsessive because of how much work you have to put into reading this book. Like you have to read footnotes, you have to flip back and forth, sometimes you have to turn it upside down. Like it's so much effort <laughs> but in my opinion is so worth it and is everything that I could have ever asked for in a horror novel. So that is my explanation for this one for an espresso shot. <laughs> so yeah those are my recommendations for books based on coffee. I, let me know if you've read any of these or agree with any of my explanations or if you would like to read any of these based on these recommendations. <laughs> Thank you all for watching and I will see all of you guys next time. Phew.